It's Friday, November 5, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. More and more people are falling on hard times because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and according to the Salvation Army, it's under increasing pressure to keep up with the demand. Word of this from the Divisional Commander of the Salvation Army, Major Brendan Greenish, today at the launch of this year's Kettle and Letter Appeal, seeking to raise $700,000. In this environment, we have seen people who would normally contribute to the Kettle campaign now needing assistance themselves. Therefore, the growing need for food, help for the homeless, and others affected by because of the pandemic the Salvation Army bell must ring. We rely on the Kettle's campaign donations to raise enough money to help hundreds of families across, the, across Barbados during the Christmas holidays and beyond. And this is especially true this year with so many people out of work and struggling financially. The Salvation Army has seen a number of people needing our support greatly increase. The number of people in need of support has jumped nearly five times over last year. Chairman of the Advisory Board for the Salvation Army, Paul Bernstein, says despite the new challenges, the charity continues to provide relief to those who need help most. I am very, very, very proud to say that from January this year to the end of September this year, which is only nine months, which is actually three quarters of a year, we have actually provided the following 26,330 hot meals of which of which 8,139 of those meals were delivered to shut-ins 419 people received clothing Furnishings were given to 25 families, and 38 persons received other help. We also gave out 1,600 food hampers to assist the most vulnerable. And next month, we intend to give out the usual 4,000 Christmas hampers to those families in need. We also plan to give Christmas gifts to children's homes, senior citizens' homes, and the less fortunate. He appealed to citizens to give generously. We have a lot to do. I need your support to do it. Our target is $700,000, the same as last year. And let me assure you, as it was just said earlier, the Salvation Army uses 85, ce 85 cents in every dollar received to provide direct services to its people in need. I want to repeat that. It is very important. It is very important for the public of Barbados and the business sectors and those who help us to know that the Salvation Army uses 85 cents in every dollar received to provide services to the people in need. Barbados is set to receive another $24 million U.S. million from the International Monetary Fund, possibly by December. Following talks this week and the sixth review under the U.S. $290 million extended fund facility, the IMF mission and local authorities reach a staff-level agreement, which is subject to the Executive Board's approval next month. The IMF said the Barbados economy is projected to grow by 2% this year, down from a predicted 3%. It noted that the Barbados Economic and Recovery Transformation Program is on track, but said the reform program faces economic challenges owing to the ongoing global coronavirus pandemic. In other news this Friday, the Prince of Wales will visit Barbados to participate in activities marking the island's transition to a republic within the Commonwealth later this month. A brief statement issued by the British High Commission says Prime Minister Mia Motley extended the invitation to the Prince as the future head of the Commonwealth to be a guest of honour at the celebration events. Motley and the Prince of Wales met during this week at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland. At a news conference on Thursday, she dismissed reports in the British press of snubbing the Prince at the event. Prince Charles has been a friend of Barbados. And in fact, I use this opportunity to deprecate those parts of the British press who tried to say what I was doing and that I was, what, snubbing or ignoring Prince Charles by looking into my phone. You know what I was writing in my phone? 
I was writing two sentences for my speech, so I didn't forget them. You understand? That's all I was doing. But I think that we are in a good place. And um, let's see how the next few weeks unfold. Did he bring it up? Did he mention it? Um, I don't know who mentioned it. We discussed it. I can't remember who mentioned it, but we're in a good place. Believe you me. The COVID-19 death toll moved to 170 years. South authorities reported the death of one woman. The 58-year-old Barbadian died at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility on Thursday. She was unvaccinated. Meanwhile, the island recorded 328 new coronavirus cases, 146 males and 182 females from 1,892 tests conducted by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory. There were 926 people in isolation facilities and 6,403 in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in Guyana, multi-million dollar fines and hefty jail terms ranging from 5 to 10 years have been proposed for election offenses in a review of the country's main electoral law. We get the details from Newsroom Guyana. Some of the key amendments are, number one, a presiding officer, that is the person who manages the voting and counting process at the polling place, to be charged and liable on summary conviction to a fine of $5 million and to imprisonment for 10 years if he or she fails to provide materials to agents of political parties. Secondly, at the opening of polls, the presiding officer should give each polling agent a copy of the official list of electors or parts of the list with the names of those who are entitled to vote there and their registration records. Thirdly, a presiding officer or anyone who allows someone to vote when they are not eligible could be found guilty of an offence and be liable on summary conviction to a fine of $10 million and to imprisonment for 10 years. Eligibility to vote is checked against several things including the person's identity and their fingers to ensure that there is no ink to suggest they voted before. Fourthly, the use of a tendered ballot, that is, of a different color than the ordinary ballot paper, could be used to allow someone to vote when that person's name has been marked off of the list, but the presiding officer determines that the person has not voted and that a mistake has been made. The on the international scene, thousands of young campaigners marched through the streets of Glasgow on Friday, demanding urgent action from world leaders at the UN Climate Conference to stave off catastrophic climate change. Youth on the march. Demonstrators and pressure groups say they have been underwhelmed by the commitments made so far in Glasgow. They see COP26 as a cop-out. What the Swedish activist Greta Thunberg, present at the protest, calls blah blah blah. I don't think that world leaders discussing there is of any use uh, because they are only saying what they have been saying for decades, uh, which is only false promises or uh, targets that so-called ambitious but are actually full of loopholes um, so for them it's not because it's just full of green motion Greta Thunberg has galvanized young people around the world to take action in five days for future school strikes some Scottish children did just that singing and dancing in Glasgow city centre young people were out in force across the city in the future we're we're going to be adults and we will have, and I don't want to pass this on to the next generation. 
The demo is a part of a series of protests being staged worldwide to coincide with the UN climate negotiations in Glasgow. The COP26 meeting ends next Friday with much more action needed by national governments to address the climate emergency. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.